Hi, I'm Journey's avatar from Wish.com. Anyways, we saw a beautiful trailer for a new Avatar movie that is coming out, The Way of Water. And in this tutorial video, we're going to recreate this epic scene right here entirely inside Adobe After Effects using compositing techniques. You're gonna see how to create your own lighting and blend everything together to create new realistic scenes that don't actually exist. So without further ado, I'm totally blue. <laughs> Everything starts with an idea, like every project. But with matte painting, you can take this quite literally. We first need to know how our matte painting is going to look before we can start anything. This is going to be super important when we are going to look for our own assets or if we want to shoot our own shots. We need to know certain things like the camera angle, are we going to shoot from high up or down low? Another very important aspect is the lighting. Where does it come from and where does it go? This will determine a lot in our matte painting later on. So how can we start our matte painting project? Well, by roughly drawing out our scene. Here we can determine the placements of our lights, our composition, maybe our actor here, like that, some environment assets like a huge mountain like that and our composition doesn't need to be final it's just a rough reference so our post-production will go a lot easier however because we are recreating this awesome scene from the latest avatar trailer we don't really need to draw out our reference idea because we already have this cool scene and now that we have that reference idea we can start with the search for our assets and shoot our own avatar we have another stupid idea <laughs> Yeah, someone is gonna have to help me in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah. One day you find the job of your life. <laughs> the way of the water. Like you can guess, we're going to need a lot of stock clips. A whole lot. And there's no better place than Storyblocks, the sponsor of today's video, to find those clips. When we're looking for stock images, it's very important to look for similar light settings. Meaning the light comes from the same direction or overall flat lighting. And finding such matching clips is super easy in Storyblocks' ever-growing library. With more than 1 million royalty-free high-quality stock assets, we can find enough assets to build endless worlds. Like deserts, mountains, micro shots of nature and much more. You can find stock assets in HD to 4K resolution, various After Effects templates for a perfect title intro, epic music and sound effects to make your avatar world come to life and much more. Now when building our cool avatar world we sometimes have clips that don't fit in our scene. Luckily this isn't a problem because we can just download an endless amount of assets from their library with the unlimited all access plan. Meaning you can download every clip that you have and test it out in your world. However if you want you can also check out the other of affordable plans, there is one for every need. And if you want to know more about Storyblocks and how to start downloading right away, click the first link in the description down below or go straight to storyblocks.com slash Cinecom. We have everything we need to start our matte painting. We have our reference, our stock assets and our very own avatar. Now the first thing we will be doing inside After Effects is creating a new composition with an After Effects camera. We will now get this camera pop-up window. This window will allow us to choose different settings for our camera and the first one we see is the type of camera. This can be one or two nodes. But what is the difference? Well the one node camera operates in a very similar way as a real life camera, meaning you will be able to pan, tilt, zoom and so on. The two node camera on the other hand will revolve around a single point in the 3D space, making them perfect for more complex arc or orbit movements. So you can already guess we'll be working with the one node camera. Now the next setting is the film size, which we will be leaving on 36mm. This represents a full frame real life camera. The focal length is something personal and if you want you can always change it later. Just like the f-stop, which will determine the amount of depth of field. And voila, 
those are the basic settings of our After Effects camera. Just press OK to add it. Now it's time to start adding all of our assets. However, we do need to have a battle plan. The project is going to be a mess with all the layers and clips, so of course we're going to name everything correctly. And what we also find super handy are the colored labels for your clips. Like every mountain clip we can give a certain color, every ground clip can be another color and so on. We of course start with our base plate clip. This will be our reference point for the rest of the stock assets, meaning we need to build around this clip. For us this is going to be the clip of Avatar Jordi and this water clip. Now we shot Jordi in front of a green screen, so let's key him out. And once we have that, we can place Jordi onto the rock in the water. When you composite yourself into a new scene, the biggest problem is always to plant your feet into the new surface. So that's why we got this set up right here. I'm going to stand on this plank, which is a little bit slanted, just like the rock inside Adobe After Effects. And the idea is that we can reuse the shadow and the reflections that I'm creating in this plank right here. That's why we've chosen for a dark brownish color, which also kind of matches the rock. Also, you're gonna get the right reflections. If you would stand on a green screen, you would get green reflections. Now I'm getting this brownish color reflection onto my feet. And now Janik will explain to you how it's done in After Effects. Basically, it's super simple. We just masked out our shadow and multiplied it on the stone. And that's it. Because we want to use the After Effects camera to add movement to our shot, we also need to work with 3D layers. So make all the clips we have a 3D layer and move them in the 3D space to place them correctly. Of course, use the 3D axis to move the layers around and have the most control. Obviously, when we keep adding layers and layers to create depth, we also need to move them on the Z axis, making them further away from the camera. But if your object like a mountain gets too small when moving it back, just scale it up. When we now move our camera, we will get this cool parallax effect because we created depth on the Z axis, exactly what we're going for. However, this also means that you have to pay attention to every clip's position. If for example, Jordi is sitting on a stone, then the stone and Jordi clip need to have the same Z position. Otherwise, they shift when creating the parallax movement. This technique will also give us the possibility to add effects between layers, like clouds, fog, light rays, whatever you want. Again, giving you more control over the entire scene. Now, speaking of control, like you can see here, we have some mountains that are quite flat and they don't have any highlights. And we know that the light is coming from the middle, so our rocks need a highlight on their left side. Of course you can paint them all in if you have a limited time, but we can also use After Effects lights to reintroduce our highlights. Just create a point light and set the fall off to smooth. The rest of the settings will be personal to your main scene. Then we place the light next to our object in the 3D space to give it a highlight. But because we have multiple objects and are going to need multiple lights, we will pre-comp every object separately with their own lights, removing a light spill on different objects. Now fine tune the light settings to your needs. This technique you can do for every object that needs some extra light. However, it has some restrictions. Like you can see on the rocks, the shadows aren't really correct. But for objects that are far away, we can make it work. For the world building part, we can go as crazy as we want. Every world is different, of course. So think outside of the box. Oh, what's in the box? For instance, if you want to create like an alien planet, you can use typical earthly things in a wrong way. Like using mushrooms as trees, but they are slimy. Instant alien feeling. So experiment around to see what fits best for your idea. When we are done with building, it's time to match everything together. Let's start with the colors. The first thing we can do is match the color contrasts of every clip. For this we use the color management button right here and the curse effect on our clips. When we select a red color in the color management, we can also select a red color in the curse effect. Now we can fine tune every clip to match with each other. Also do this for the green and the blue. Another important aspect in color matching are the shadows. The closer an object is, the darker the blacks. We can test that with the exposure button in your program monitor. If you crank this up, the shadows of the clips in the back need to disappear first and the objects in the front need to stay visible till the end. When using this technique, you can really fine tune your blacks. Use the level effects to make the blacks in the back more faded and the blacks in the front you can add more contrast to. When the colors are matched, we of course do an overall grading on an adjustment layer. Now one last tip to add realism and I really like this one, add subtle moving details like birds or waterfalls in the scene. This will give your world a sense of life and will really sell the matte painting. No 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Storyblocks, for your support. And I am super happy that I got all the blue paint off for me. Stay creative, guys. Yeah. <laughs>